the first time a guy usually receives flowers is at their funeral and like <laughs> it's heartbreaking right oh my god and is that true i don't know um I'm but buy like, my boyfriend flowers buy your boyfriend <laughs> flowers Welcome back to the Evergreen RX. I'm your host, Hayden, licensed mental health therapist, Cancer Moon, and the first to get deep at any party. And this is Hayden from the future jumping in to preface today's mini dose. You might recognize our guest, Ben Myers, from a previous episode all about dating and crushing and relationships. And we just had so much to yap about that I was able to pull out a little mini dose for y'all where Ben and I talk about stereotypes and misconceptions on men in dating. And Ben shares how him and some of the guy friends he polled on the issue would like to see things changed. So I hope you enjoy this. If you want to hear Ben and I chat even more in the future, then comment on this episode and let me know on Instagram and I'll bring him back on. So hope you enjoy and I'll catch you in the next one. So to kind of pivot and hopefully not lean too hard on gender stereotypes, but Mm -hmm. a little bit, because, you know, I'm curious about the male stereotypes and stigma in dating, because Mm -hmm. I think a lot of my listeners are women and we have our own stereotypes in dating. Mm -hmm. You know, one we've already touched on, which is like the clingy, Mm -hmm. you know, that gets put on women a lot just for showing interest. Um, So... Are there any male stigmas dating that you'd like to to be released from that you'd like to see be healed? Um, I mean, yes. Um, I, I. You're like no, none. <laughs> We're good. No, okay. So behind the curtain, like you posed this question to me, and I posed it to like a larger group of guy friends of like, what do you all think about this? And they threw like so he, many. He crowdsourced. I crowdsourced us. this information, Ooh. everyone. I think everything I know is crowdsourced for the record. (laughs) Um, And they threw out a lot of really great points that they would like to be released from. And the one that I want to hit on is multifaceted. Um, But it, it has to do with the pursuer dynamic and expectation on men in Mm. relationship. And it is this interesting line where we are expected to be the one to pursue, to be the one who texts, who plan, who maybe pays, not necessarily what I'm talking about here, um, but they are the catalyst for a yeah. lot of the crushing phases of it. Setting the pace. Setting the pace. And there is, there's come a point where there's this weird line where we've addressed this one of like being too interested and too engaged goes both ways, right? Um, That might be less male and more general. Um, But there is this line of showing interest. This might be less stereotypical, but like even like meeting someone out in public um, and like pursuing that later on, there is a line between being interested and being creepy yeah and that's really hard for us to walk yep men Um, deal with that i mean so much more and like it's it's hard for me to ever put any blame in women who've had to deal with that and have to put up with that in so many scenarios but i do know a lot of guys who get in their head about that dynamic of like i don't want to be creepy yeah but i am interested and sometimes scenarios have played out where the woman's like oh i didn't think you were interested like i was interested and now i'm not and they were like well now what what like i i was trying and i was trying not to be too much or in your face or like an annoying man who wants your attention um who feels like they deserve it in any capacity um and it can go too far in either direction yeah and i want to i want to point one thing out here too because obviously we're leaning a little bit more on um hetero relationships here but you can also sub in like just masculine and feminine energy here Mm -hmm. because if you do feel like you lean a little bit more towards the masculine energy or that initiator dominant type of role if we're thinking about kind of 
archetypes or, right. you know, feelings like that. Or if you feel like you have more of that feminine energy that's going to be, you know, kind of following the lead yeah. a little more. I think that's that same thing still applies because in almost any two person dynamic, there is going to be a pursuer and a pursuant mm-hmm. or whatever, you know, so that kind of I think when we're talking about these male stereotypes, it's really talking about that pursuer yes. role, which yeah. is just associated with more masculine energy. Mm-hmm. That's the more archetypal dominant spot we find ourselves in. Yep. Um, and a lot of the guy friends I have really struggle in it um, because like zooming out, we just went through kind of a while ago, but like a huge Me Too movement um, and a, just a big feminism movement in general. And if anybody is paying attention at all, uh, they are listening and like taking more of a back seat as opposed to more, mm, I don't know, old chivalrous, if that's a word, yeah, uh, like behaviors that are like i'll pick you up tomorrow night at seven chivalry that was like now with more boundary like oh just a little controlling like yeah 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 because like if a guy told me now like um i'll pick you up at seven and like no info on where we're going Mm -hmm. or one i'd be like do you know where i live yeah and i would also be like i it would be weird it would be like yeah, it would be very, very controlling. And at one point that was the norm. And it's mm-hmm. like, we can start to see how it's like, it's decreasing over time. It is more equal. It's more common now probably for Which is great. people to split mm-hmm. on the first date or something like, you know, it, but a lot of this still exists. And what I'm hearing you say is like, part of what I hear, like the antidote to what you're saying mm-hmm. is just as like the equality of the sexes continues to rise Mm -hmm. and on women too, or, you know, more of the feminine in the relationship, like, uh, not having as much expectation on, Oh, well, did he pay? Mm -hmm. Uh, did they, you know, drive money and status came up a lot in my guy group too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hold the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like what is his, shit together Mm -hmm. like is his life together together you know and like some of those expectations i think are gonna have to shift because i can just say and i've told you this like you know when i'm talking with my girlfriends it's like trying to figure out oh was it a date or was it well did he pay Mm. you know uh did he like did he plan it yeah did he go up to you and ask for your number yeah did you ask for his you know it's like when we start to maybe unwork some of those expectations Mm -hmm. for how again how to define what's going on. Like, is it romantic or is it friendship? Mm -hmm. Usually the stereotypes are the things that help kind of draw that line a little clearer. And that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. There's a lot of pressure. And guys like to be pursued. We like to be chased after too. Um, (laughs) It's true. Yeah. Like, uh, it's such a cliche thing, but like, I, some internet thing of like the first time a guy usually receives flowers is at their funeral and like oh. it's heartbreaking right oh my god and is that true i don't know um but buy like, my boyfriend flowers buy your boyfriend <laughs> flowers plan a date for him mm-hmm. buy dinner for him yep like it goes so far for us men don't often know what it's like to be loved in that way in a relationship yeah Mm, nurtured nurtured yeah cared for Mm -hmm. this is making me maybe i'll edit this out but this is making me think about um uh pookie and jet yeah you seen (laughs) pookie and jet Uh i was doing a deep dive and i haven't done that yet that i highly recommend it's honestly kind of soothing um (laughs) i started really feeling calmed by them but a lot of the comments were people being like find you a man who like treats you like Mm -hmm. jet you know, treats Pookie and like gives her gifts and just talks about how beautiful she is and and yeah. just like is, you know, very stereotypically mm-hmm. like he is the caretaker mm-hmm. and he's like, you know, kind of worshiping her mm-hmm. and it would be hard to imagine this couple as their internet personality right. switching roles mm-hmm. like her being like, Jet, you look gorgeous today. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you wearing? Yeah, it would be a little bit like jarring. 
um, because they are just kind of this stereotyped, um, they're very emblematic yeah. of those roles. And a lot of the people in the comments are like, I need this. <laughs> I need to find me like a man like that. So there still is a very pervasive thought yeah. that like, that's the goal. Yeah. Where's my jet? Where is your jet? You know, like that's what like guys love that. Yeah. Um, and there's an interesting point here to talk about of like maybe it, likely we do reach that further on in the relationship of more equality in expression of love let's yeah say. um but in the dating phase i would say it's really one-sided yep and the interesting part like going back a bit is like talking about this random example of like i'm going to pick you up at seven I could talk to so many of my lady friends and they would say, that's hot. I like that. Yeah. Not everyone. That's not everyone's speed, but it's like, to me and my system, I'm like, okay, what the fuck do I do? Like, where, where do I line? Cause I'm not that aggressive as a, as a dater in that capacity capacity. Um, I like to see, ask more questions and see where they're at as opposed to that sense of confidence. And that's what's authentic for you. That's what's which authentic is for me. what's going to find you the right match. Mm -hmm. And also, I don't, I'm not everybody would be like this, but we can bring back attachment a little bit mm -hmm. in terms of like, oh, I'll pick you up at seven. Like, oh, that's so hot. I want that. You know, is it because it's more soothing? It's mm -hmm. more predictable. Oh, he really likes me. Mm-hmm. Because he's spearheading all of this. I don't have to question it. And this is like, oh, okay, we're going back even further. Is like, this is the authentic Full circle. authenticity versus the game. Because if I am really forward like that, to a degree, I'm not playing. Or I'm making very explicit moves. It's like almost like that. You know how everything, if you get on each side of an extreme, it just comes back to a circle. Yeah. It's like that thing of like, that's either not playing the game or playing the game so hard. Uh -huh. Like it's like you are acing the game mm -hmm. or it's like one hair from tipping over to not <laughs> playing it at all. Yeah. And being way too forward. Yeah. And I agree. Like I think for men in particular, it can really be a minefield at the beginning because there's more risk mm -hmm. involved if you are expected to be the one that initiates. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of anxiety being like, you know, from my perspective, being like the female in those dynamics, of course. there's still a lot of anxiety, but I don't have as much risk because mm -hmm. I don't really have to initiate for things to happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure a lot of relationships have dissolved because one guy is not as much of the initiator, doesn't want to be dominating. Maybe it's just not authentic to them. And the girl maybe would, but is thinking, well, that's not how it goes. And if he's not initiating, he's not into me. If he, yeah. So it doesn't go anywhere. If he wanted to, he would. If he wanted to, he would. And what, uh, what a like a hot button statement that I have so many mixed feelings about. And I don't know if I can even get into them. <laughs> you're here. like, you just leave it there. <laughs> I might just leave it there.